OK, uh, so let's start our first lab. So in this lab, uh, we are going to set up our editing uh, Python editor. Uh, so we will set up our GitHub repository so that as our uh, cloud host uh, to host our uh, Python codes. And also we will also use AWS Cloud9 as our online editor. So first, let's go to GitHub. So GitHub is a great uh, place where you can find out a lot of um, uh, Python code and also the code uh, in other program programming languages. Uh, so if this is your first time, so you may need to sign up uh, and use your email address, etc. Uh, so I would recommend use your own um, personal email, so like your Gmail. So just in case, if you still want to maintain your um, GitHub profile after uh, graduate. So, so remember, uh, so choose a username, email, and also the, the password. Since I already have um, my account, so I will just log in with my existing account. So once you log in, and you can see here, so those are the other people that I'm following on GitHub. Um, and also, if I go to my profile, So here you can see those are my repositories. So uh, I share my Python code uh, here on GitHub, and you can see how many people are following my um, uh, my different projects. So this is a great place that you can uh, show and also share your um, work, like either in Python or in Notebook, uh, with other people. So let's once we have the, the account, let's create a new repository um, so once you have your account so let's go to repository and let's create a new and give the name so I would just call it i241 and so this is a repository for my i241 and let's make it public so that uh, you will share all your labs here so I will be able to check your lab um, let's add a readme file and also let's add a git ignore file. So let's choose Python as our template. So that means uh, some files that uh, will be ignored when you're editing the Python. And let's choose a license. Uh, so the most common one is MIT. Okay, so let's create our repository. Okay, so right now you can see this is ready. So now we have this in this repository, we have this readme file, so that's the default one. So this is more like um, the the main page of your uh, repository. And we have the license information that is was generated automatically. And also we have our ignore file, so that is based on the Python uh, template. Uh, so if you like, you can also edit the readme file. So for example, uh, from I480. Uh, and also you can, if you want to share this one with others in the future, you can provide your name and also contact information, etc. Okay. Uh, it also support uh, the markdown syntax. So we will talk that one later. So you can write more about uh, you can read write more in this readme file so explaining so what this one is for so um, share my labs and also final jack projects of i241 okay and you can commit all right so now we have our repository ready so next, uh, let's also uh, create an access token of our GitHub account uh, because that, uh, uh, so later on we will update the GitHub repository. So that will require our username and also password. And so uh, it is not the best, it is not the best practice to use your account password. So. GitHub rec recommending using the access tokens. So 
let's go to the account settings, not the repository settings. So let's go to the account settings and go to the developer settings and let's create a personal access tokens. So access token is more like a password, but you can revoke, you can delete the, the those tokens. Uh, so for example, if you feel like that those tokens are no longer needed, so you can just delete that token. So let's create a new token. And this one, we, we call it, this is for our Cloud9 Python editor. And for the scope, uh, we just choose the first one. Okay, so for control of the private repositories, so uh, that will be enough. Okay, and let's create this token. And you will see you have this um, very long string. So um, you can see this one uh, will be uh, hidden uh, immediately. So you make sure that you copy that one. Okay, and you can save that one uh, to your local uh, TXT file first. So just in case that uh, we we cannot access it later. So I'm going to save that one into a txt file. OK. And next, let's go to our uh, AWS Educator account. So let's go to AWS Educate. And now you should all have received uh, AWS Educate invitation, and you should have the, this AWS Educate account. So let's sign in. Uh, use your email. So I'm using Gmail for my student demo account. And once logged in, and let's go to the classroom of this class. So go to my classroom and find out the classroom of this one. So this one is intro to um, program and also data science. And you can see we have 100 credits. So let's go to classroom. And here you are, we will be able to access the AWS console. And you can see we now we have 100 credits remaining. And let's access the console. So now we are in the AWS Manager Console. So this is the same interface if you are using a full privilege account. However, there are still some limitations by using an AWS Educate account. But it, those limitations will not impact our class. So let's find out Cloud9. And you can see Cloud9 Cloud is actually here. But just in case you cannot find it, you can type Cloud9 in the search bar. This is the Cloud ID for writing, running, and also debugging code. So let's click Cloud9. And so right now, you can see we don't have any environment. So if you have any environment, you can find that in account environments. So right now, it is empty. So let's create an environment. So an environment is more like a, it's an editor. Uh, so I would call it I. Uh, so this is the Python for my I241. And next, so let's choose the default one. So we, we create a new EC2 instance. Um, so for more secure uh, options, you can choose SS Edge connections, but let's just use a direct access. Uh, instance type. So if you want to try some very powerful Python code, and you can choose uh, the other large instance, which will be also more expensive. For this class, let's also use uh, the smallest one, so the cheapest one, so that is T2 micro. Uh, for the others, we can choose Linux, uh, Amazon Linux as a platform. And for the cost saving settings, so that means uh, so after a specific amount of time, so your environment will be automatically stopped. So let's choose 30 minutes. So that means um, after 30 minutes, uh, the instance will be stopped, uh, which is, is great because when that instance is stopped, 
that will keep saving our that will save our credits. And let's also keep the network setting as default. Let's say next. So here you need to review the settings and uh, everything looks right. So again, make sure you choose T2 micro, the cheapest one, because we only have 100 credits and then we'll use that 100 for this entire semester. So let's choose the cheapest one. And let's create the environment. OK, uh, so this may take a few minutes uh, for the environment to be ready. So uh, we can pause the video here. OK, uh, so now we can say we have this uh, welcome um, page. Uh, so we can close that. Um, so it is my personal preference. So uh, I would change the, the color. So like go to, if we go to preference and I think that is in the user settings or uh, themes. So I would use this flight theme because that is easier for me to record the video. So it is up to you. So you can choose different uh, colors if you like, uh, but I just use the white. So that is easier for me to record the video. Okay, uh, so here you can see um, this part is where uh, we are going to add it to the Python code. And beneath this part, this is a terminal. So we are using a Linux instance, so a Linux computer uh, in the cloud, so that uh, we will run some Linux code uh, commands. And uh, don't worry about those comments. So those are very simple commands. And on the left side, you can see those are the folders. So this is the root folder of our editor. And they also create a new readme file. OK, so that is on Cloud9. OK, uh, so now let's. So what we are going to do next is that we will synchronize our local Cloud9. So we will download uh, the repository that we created in GitHub into our local cl Cloud9 editor so that we will add it to the Python code in the Cloud9. And next, we will upload the code to the GitHub. So let's go to the GitHub. And let's go to the repository that we just created. OK, so I uh, 241. And here you can see we have the code. And we choose HTTPS option and we click. So we copy this. This is the URL of the GitHub repository that we just created. So let's copy that. And let's go back to our Cloud9 editor. And let's go to the terminal here. And let's type GIT space CLONE. So that means we will download the repository from GitHub repository into our local environment. And next, we right click and also just paste uh, this URL that we copied from the, our GitHub repository. And let's hit Enter. OK, so now you can see we have new folder just being created. And within this new folder, we can see uh, we have the license that downloaded to our local Cloud9 um, Python editor. And if we click the readme file, we can say, OK, so that is exactly the readme file that we downloaded uh, from GitHub. And you can see this ignore file uh, was not downloaded because that is used to filter out the other uh, files that should not be synchronized. All right. Uh, so now we see um, we have created a copy into our cl Cloud9 editor. Uh, so let's right click. So this is the Cloud9 editor, uh, our local repository. Let's right click. Let's add a new file. So this file, let's call it lab1.py. So py is an extension for the Python code. And hit Enter. And now let's double click this one. 
So here we just created a new Python file in our local repository and let's run let's write a very simple Python code. Let's say print um, as a convention and also parentheses and also quotation mark. As a convention, if this is your first uh, programming code, so let's type hello world. Okay. And now let's run it. You can see this wrong button. Uh, so now you can see here we have this output. So this is the Python code, and we just executed that Python code in our local uh, Cloud9 editor. And you can see beneath here we see this output. Okay, so which is nice. Uh, so now we added some file to our local repository. Our next step is that we want upload this Python file back to the GitHub repository. So to do that, let's go to the terminal here. And right now you can see we are still in a root terminal. Okay, but our local repository is within this I241 folder. So let's type cd space and i241. Okay, cd space i241. So now you can see here this one has changed. So that means right now we are in this local repository. Okay, so next we are going to type uh, a command that uh, you can copy this command from the lab instruction. So that basically will tell the our local repos repository that we are going to save the tokens and also username to our local environment, uh, which actually is not recommended if you are using that in the production environment uh, because those tokens will be saved in a plain text so that is not um, encrypt so that is not uh, the the 100 percent best practice however since to simplify our class so let's just choose to save that as a plain text uh, so that we just need to type the token one time and the token will be saved into this local repository um, uh, so that next time we don't need to type the tokens. So let's run this command. Okay, so next we are going to uh, tell uh, our local repository that, okay, so there's something new in this lab one file. So we want to add that one uh, to our local repository. So let's see, get add dash dash all. Okay, and now if you check git status, you can see we have this new file that is ready uh, to be committed. Okay, so let's commit that one. So git commit dash m. So let's add a uh, comments here. Uh, so my first Python code. Okay, and right now you can see we need to use this git configure to save our, uh, to set our username and also email. Uh, so if you want to do that, uh, feel free to do that. If not, uh, you can ignore this. Uh, so we just committed this change and let's, now let's upload this change to our GitHub repository. So from local to to the GitHub. So let's say git push. So git push will up, upload our um, local repository to the GitHub repository. Okay, so now because this is the first time, so we need to tell the username. So type your username of your GitHub. So mine is my Gmail username. And they're asking the password. So the password is a token that uh, we just created. So let's see if the token is, is still available. 
OK, uh, it is not available. So um, but fortunately, we copy this one to our notebook. So let's copy this one. And let's right click and uh, paste. You will not see that token be showing up here for security purposes. So let's just hit enter. And if everything is right, and you can see that we just uploaded uh, one file to the GitHub. And now if we just type git log, and you can see the change. So my first Python code has been updated. So now if we go to our um, repository on GitHub, and you can see this lab one Python file has been updated, and also our uh, comments is also here, so my first Python code. And if you open this one, you can see that is exactly the Python code that we just typed. Okay, so that is for the first lab. So we set up the our GitHub account and also our um, repository. Uh, we also set up our uh, tokens. Okay. These tokens, and you can see it has been just used. Um, and also we set up our Cloud9 environment and we saved our tokens into this local Cloud9 environment so that next time when we want to change something, we don't need uh, to type the, uh, the username and also the password again. So that is, has already been saved into our local um, uh, repository. But that was in the plain text. So uh, it is still not the best practice and is not recommended for if you are doing coding in production. Okay, uh, so now that's, that's for our lab. So let you can safely close this editing environment and remember this editing environment will terminate after 30 minutes. So you don't need to worry about that. Uh, you can also share this one with others. However, uh, it requires that it should be belong to the same uh, uh, AWS account. So it does not work in our scenario because we are using AWS Educate account. So in the production uh, environment, so you may be able to share your uh, code with others. OK, so we can now close that. Um, if we refresh, see how many credits we have used. OK, we, we might, we may not be able to see the change until tomorrow. So, OK. And again, so do not share your tokens with others. Uh, so that's why that you, you will not see my tokens that in this video. Um, and also, it is also not the best it is not recommended to, to save your tokens on your local computer. Uh, so I would delete this one. 